When hinges creak in doorless chambers, and strange and frightening sounds echo through the halls. Whenever candlelights flicker, where the air is deathly still. Welcome, foolish mortals, to Amusement Labs, where today we'll be taking a look at the incredibly clever engineering behind all the iconic effects in the ride system in Disney's The Haunted Mansion. While there are multiple installations of the Haunted Mansion around the world, today's video will be referencing the original at the Disneyland Resort. So sit back, relax, or stand in a queue line, which you're probably already doing, because this is how the Haunted Mansion works. How it works on Amusement Labs is brought to you by our generous patrons. Join today and get early access and perks through the link below. Our tour begins in the past, circa 1966 to 1969, where Imagineers and their leader Walt Disney are in the corruptible mortal states, trying to figure out a seamless way to lower riders 18 feet into the ground. In order to bring riders to the loading platform of their newest original attraction, a pair of two large octagon-shaped hydraulic elevators were disguised as portrait galleries used to set the tone for the rest of the ride. When guests load into the stretching room, they are stepping into an open-ended, cup-like structure supported by a hydraulic ram. Around guests, seven walls and a set of sliding doors form the gallery. In reality, a large part of the walls and the doors are hidden by not only the false ceiling, but the bottom of the striped wallpaper as well. Your descent begins from the push of a button on a hidden operation panel, and the ram begins to lower up to 90 guests the 18 feet to the bottom. The wallpaper section behaves differently by actually moving at half your speed, making it look like it's moving away from you, but it is still actually still descending down. This allows for the iconic portraits enough time to dramatically unroll from behind the wall. As a result, the wallpaper has been lowered to allow the ceiling, which has remained stationary, to line up with the top of the wall and the floor to reach the bottom. Lights go out and our ghost hostess figure is illuminated from behind a scrim which forms the false ceiling. Two now comically large doors, the full height of the wood wall, open and riders head into the remaining queue up to the continuous loading station. We now move to the on-ride effects, which were, for their time, groundbreaking. One of the first illusions along our tour is the endless hallway. The haunted mansion is notorious for its use of large glass sheets and mirrors and the endless hallway is no different. While many effects were kept secret, this one is not all that hard to figure out. About half the hallway is truly there. Two doors on each side sit between a large sheet of tinted glass and a floor-to-ceiling mirror at the end of the hallway. When lit from between the panes, a recursion effect occurs which endlessly reflects the two-door segment and the light of the hallway all the way down. Additionally, a candelabra with lights for flames is suspended and manipulated by thin cables and the backside of the candelabra is painted black to eliminate reflections. As we move along our route, the next iconic effect is Madame Leota herself. She involves a small digital projector aimed at a thin mold of a human face. This hollow bust inside of a crystal ball is sent floating around the room via three cables attached to three motors that carefully control the position of the ball. In the early decades of the Haunted Mansion, Madame Leota was table-bound to hide a large projector, but thanks to technological advancements, Disney was able to send her flying in 2007. We then come to the most iconic illusion of them all, the ballroom scene. As many of you already know, this is achieved by eight large and very expensive and not easily replaced floor-to-ceiling panes of glass hidden by columns in the room. In front of riders and behind the glass is an illuminated ballroom featuring many fixtures, furniture, and the like. Atop of the view of the ballroom, ghosts seem to be materializing for a swinging good time. During this scene, riders are traveling on the upper balcony of the room, but below them are static figures on rotation tables. These figures are placed equidistant from the glass to where in the room they are intended to appear. The figures, featuring exaggerated colors to compensate for color dulling, are illuminated in the otherwise all-black room to cause reflections onto the glass. These reflections then appear to be within the ballroom and not below riders where they actually are. Additionally, there are more figures above the right path that use the same effect to seemingly float above the ballroom. This equidistant reflection technique 
further builds on the Pepper's Ghost illusion and at sheer size makes it one of the most memorable scenes in the entire ride. Artura quickly moves into the attic, where we meet Constance the axe-wielding bride and the recently revived Hatbox Ghost. Originally opening with the ride back in 1969, the Hatbox Ghost was a short-lived figure due to numerous issues. Today, the Hatbox Ghost was reformed and installed, restoring his silent legacy. His weird projected head works much like the current Madame Leota head, and through careful lighting tricks, his head disappears hiding his face mold and his second projected head shines from behind a mirror inside of his hat box. As we descend into the graveyard, we are greeted by the ubiquitous singing bus belting the iconic hit Grim Grinning Ghosts. Like how some believe the Madame Leota effect works, the singing bus are featureless, light gray bus with projectors filling in the remaining mouths and eyes. This effect, while simple, has become a staple of the attraction through many of its installations. Finally, as guests prepare to unload, the mischievous ghosts of the haunted mansion get nice and close with guests by seemingly sitting with them in their doom buggies. Achieved using a tinted mirror, these animatronic ghosts, which match the speed of the doom buggies, are located just behind the mirrors and are illuminated to shine just enough to be visible through the mirror while still reflecting guests. In other installations of the Haunted Mansion, this effect has also been switched for screens that have the same effect, but allows Disney to make the figures more animated and even use the faces of writers on the animation. This combination of classic and innovative illusions within the Haunted Mansion makes the ride such a legendary piece of history and one that has continued to thrive for over half a century. Now that you understand the effects used on Disney's The Haunted Mansion, we can learn how the legendary Disney Omnimover or Doom Buggy system works which can be found in part 2 of this video in the iCard above, where I go through the patent and changes made to other installations of the ride system around other Disney parks. Please subscribe, ring the bell, and if you really enjoyed the video, please consider joining my Patreon. This concludes the 2020 How It Works season here on Amusement Labs, and I cannot thank each and every one of you enough for helping me grow this channel nearly 30,000 subscribers and counting. I hope I've inspired you to stay curious and appreciate the incredible engineering behind your favorite rides. Thank you so much for an amazing year and I can't wait to share what I have in store for next season. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the parks.